The English language is a lot like a big pile of Legos. It's made up of bits and pieces that serve different roles and have different strengths and functioning. At the very base of the English language, we have this type of Lego brick. It is solid, it is strong, you build towers out of it. These are our sentences, our independent clauses. Within your baggies, you will see that you have a few. Whenever we use these Legos today, we're gonna to talk about how to build and join and add complexity onto sentences. Let's start with the very root of the English language, which is an independent sentence. We've been calling this a lot of things, a sentence. In math, we call it a one, as far as one idea at a time. This is the shortest sentence in the English language, uh, other than uh, some weird case scenarios. Legos rule. A subject is what your sentence is about, and a verb is what is done. So usually, like in this sentence, it could be an action word. Legos rule, that's what they do. And then we had the am, is, are, was, and were, these states of being, these linking verbs. So the, your sentence could be he is, she was, Legos are. Definitely they need more than that to be healthy, but they can stand alone at that level. When you join two sentences in the English language, you get two choices, and you are limited to two. Don't be like the kids in my writing class. Miranda McCloskey joined six. No, no, no. When you join two sentences together, you have to have proper punctuation. One way to do it is to use a comma and a conjunction, and the other way is to use a semicolon. Don't be like Ty Hill and forget the commas. That's what you get, Ty. One of the problems you guys have with being addicted to commas and just sticking them in there is every time you have an and or a but or a so, you're like, ooh, I better put a comma there because you feel like it's the right thing to do because often when you're joining sentences, it is. The only time you should ever have that comma with your conjunction is if it's balanced. This is the fulcrum of the lever and it's balanced on either side because there's two sentences together. The great news is, is that there's only four types. A lot of you can't get to a perfect score, like the eight out of eight, because you're struggling with understanding what it means to have complexity in a sentence. A subordinate clause, if you don't like that term, think one half, one half phrases, are gonna be represented today by these pieces because they're half of a sentence. They're half of the sentence representation, the skinny pieces. The reason why these add complexity is that they're, they're wannabe sentences. They're almost there, they're halfway there because inside of them, they have sentences. But the problem is, is that there's other words that handicap them in a sense where they can't stand alone. Cause and effect words. Although I'm old, what happened? Why? Since we love to build, okay, well, what's the rest of that idea? After we ate, what happened? Did you have dessert? Because I am creative, what was the result of your creativity? The reason they're complex is not necessarily because they have that half phrase inside of them, but because the idea that they're bringing to the table actually has complexity within it. Sometimes you'll see other phrases, little cheap old phrases. These look like they might have complexity because of their size since Monday at home after school. They might even start with subordinators and those one half words. But if there's no sentence inside of them, we're not hitting any level of complexity. When you go to write, here's a point on your uh, English ACT, and I just found out yesterday on that site that with our binders, our mapping, our futures, they have practice online ACTs for free that will score themselves for you. So that's something I'm gonna definitely wanna look at. Anyway, one point on the ACT I want you to know that if you ever start a sentence with like a descriptive phrase or any phrase before you hit the sentence itself, it gets offset with a comma. The problem is, is that when you do it at the end, okay, so here's one, here's another one. When you do it at the end, there is no comma, and that's a point on your ACT English too. So at the beginning sentences, they get commas, at the end, they don't, and you'll get a little comma practice as you build today too. My ultimate goal at the end of today's assignment is to have all students be able to write a compound complex sentence. This is an example of one where you have two sentences joined together and then you add in a piece of complexity, but you can have as many pieces of complexity that you'd like. Whether they're additional phrases, whether they're subordinate clauses or one half phrases, you can keep going and going and going and you'll never hit a structural problem within your own writing. 
let's talk about the tasks that we have after we talk about how cute my cat is. It's Emily.